One of the questions I get a lot from people is how do I become a more productive coder? What do I need to do to improve my coding abilities, have more energy, to be able to code longer perhaps, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So a couple of tips. First of all, optimal coding in terms of hardcore coding, people know this who watch my channel, is about three to four hours a day. Depending on you, you may be able to stretch it four or five, depending on the situation. Ultimately though, uh, a lot of coders are hampering themselves in terms, of, in terms of their ability to code because they're sitting all day coding. Now, and another thing that coders tend to do is eat a lot of pizza. This is not a good combination. Healthy body, healthy mind, very old expression because it's true. If you are today like I was in the past you probably sit around all day writing lots of code eating snacks pizza maybe taking soft drinks and next thing you know you got a bit of a belly on you a bit of a, a little saggy where it shouldn't be sagging and uh, this has profound impacts in terms of your ability to be a coder in ways you probably haven't considered so first and foremost when you are even 10 pounds overweight this is weighing you down literally. It is tasking your system, your heart, and your uh, your whole system has much more to handle in terms of just volume of mass. Um, this is making you more tired more quickly. If you have a bigger gut, it's probably going to be helping to strain your lower back. So if you have lower back pains, aches and pains in your joints, this again, it comes down to the fact that you're probably overweight. Now, sitting all day is not good in terms of, uh, you know, everybody knows you should do a little bit of exercise, but the fact of the matter is, the thinner you are, within reason, you don't want to get dangerously thin, but if you are if you hit BMI, body mass index, essentially, good healthy body weight, you will be able to sit longer, more comfortably, you have much less back pains and joint pains, You'll be able to concentrate more easily. And when you're relatively thin, uh, you're just going to feel better about yourself. And this all contributes to your ability to code. So I've been reading articles more and more recently where they've realized, the science has realized that sitting is the new smoking in that it's really not very good for us. But I think even more important, and you ask any trainer of this, uh, when it comes to your weight, that is really the primary determinant of whether or not you're going to be uh, feeling good about yourself, feeling good physically, and even long-term, medium-term illness comes into this. So there's this famous study that I learned about decades ago where they took monkeys and they wanted to see, with monkeys, they wanted to see whether or not the quantity of food, the quantity of food, had an impact in terms of whatever. So what they did is they had a group of monkeys that would eat the normal allotted monkey food. I don't know what that is. Whatever monkeys eat. And then they had another group of monkeys that would eat, that would eat uh, 10% less, 10-15% less. Same exact diet, but just 10-15% less. And they had another group that ate 25% more, something like that. So one group ate a little more, one group ate a little less than usual, and one group ate the usual amount. What they found, and they ran this experiment for like decades, like three decades, I think it was, four decades. And you can find it on YouTube if you just type in monkey food study or something like that, you can find that video. And uh, what they found is that the monkeys that ate, uh, whatever, 10% more, 20%, 20 or 20% or more, I don't know what the exact amount was. What they found with those monkeys is that uh, they, First of all, you see them, they look really old. They look like pretty old monkeys uh, compared to uh, the monkeys who didn't eat uh, the full allotted diet. I'll get to that in a second. So the monkeys ate a little bit too much, Ten, even 10%, I mean, it was only 10% more, 15% more, something like that. They aged much more quickly. They had much higher incidence of uh, psychological problems, depression problems. You never want to be around depressed monkeys. Not a good scene. So the monkeys were more likely to be depressed, far more likely. 
They had heart disease and diabetes. They had all kinds of other hypertension issues. They had all kinds of illnesses. Not necessarily what we would directly relate to how much you weigh, having a huge impact on this population of slightly obese monkeys who ate just a little bit more. On the other hand, you had these monkeys who ate just a little bit less. And if you go watch that video on YouTube, I'm sure you'll find it pretty quickly, those monkeys aged much more gracefully, much more slowly. In, like, if you look at the video, you see the, the monkeys ate a little bit less. They look much younger. They're like, like young stud monkeys, even though they're the same age. And those monkeys also had much less depression, uh, much more psychologically balanced, much less cancers, heart problems, much less all kinds, of, just much healthier. So what that study showed you is that how much you eat is very important. Controlling and managing your food consumption is extremely important. So for me, when I uh, was, uh, I got a little portly in my younger days as a coder, sitting around all day coding, and I looked at my, I said, okay, I got to lose some weight here. I used to be pretty, I used to be an athlete and so forth. So I started looking up what I had to do. And I realized um, that the key to all, it all, I realized was, in fact, uh, habits, consumptions, and mindset. Not exercising like a maniac. And it's kind of funny because all these programs out there that you see, very emphasize training like a maniac. Oh, you got to train every day. That's... Ask any personal trainer, I'll tell you, it's 90% uh, habits and uh, consumption and 10% exercise. In fact, with minimal amount of exercise, like you know, a few push-ups every now and then, walking around every day, but you combine that with great habits and, 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 and um, great consumption habits and, and nutrition and so forth, you're going to lose a ton of weight, you're going to feel much better, and you're going to be much healthier. So... Code is slowly killing a lot of coders because coders are sitting around all day munching on bad food with bad eating habits. And they don't know how to manage their consumption. Management of consumption is key to all this. Not huge exercise. Exercise helps, but it's on the periphery. So when I was looking into this whole thing years and years ago, I was looking at training. Okay, I got to lose this many calories, blah, blah, blah. And I was looking at it that... I was looking at how many calories I would burn given a certain amount of exercise. What I found out was that to burn, I think it was like 350 calories, I would have to train pretty hard for an hour. 350 calories, hard training for an hour. But it's not just an hour of training. You gotta get to the gym, or you're gonna be sweating, you gotta take a shower after, you gotta change your clothes, you gotta get there maybe. So one hour training is more like two hours of your day, a lot of time. And then I looked at how much how many calories did you get in a Big Mac, as just an example? 550 calories in a Big Mac. And I quickly realized that it was a lot easier to cut down my Big Macs by two a week. That would be the equivalent, more of an equivalent, of training super hard for two days a week. Actually, it's more like training super hard three days a week. 550 calories, that's 2,000, you know, you get the idea. So I realized right then and there, just mathematically speaking, logically speaking, if I wanted to lose weight, calorie uh, control and consumption control, I'm not talking about starving yourself to death, but just like basic little things you can do had a much bigger impact. So there you go. If you want to become healthier, you want to lose weight, you, you want to become a better developer, you want to avoid uh, long, medium and long-term uh, disabilitating and painful uh, illnesses and so forth, you got to start looking at controlling your consumption and managing your psychology in that regard. Throw in a little exercise as icing on the cake, pun intended, uh, and you're going to be golden. Anyway, I hope this video is useful. Uh, the reason I bring this all up because this has, of course, a direct impact on my own life. Uh, as you know, I've been, I fast intermittently, not as religiously as I should because uh, you need accountability there. A good friend of mine, and I've mentioned it before, he's, uh, he was 100 pounds overweight and he lost a ton of weight and he's in fantastic shape five years now. Actually, I'll put a link below. You can check out his video. It's pretty cool stuff. And when he, now he's, he's, he's uh, away on vacation, but when, not vacation, but he's visiting his family in the States. But he was here, he kept me, kept me on my toes, kind of like a coach. The COVID pounds that I had put on 
I lost it all pretty quickly without having to exercise much at all, really. And just controlling consumptions, good habits, and so forth. Anyway, you can check out his video below. He's, uh, he's now got a program. Yes, yeah, it's a bit of a shameless promotion here, but, you know, again, I've been talking about this for the longest time now, as you know, you know, talking about healthy body, healthy mind, sitting around all day, eating bad food, it ain't gonna help you. So even if you're making a ton of money as a coder, if you're not feeling, if you're feeling sick all the time, tired all the time, uh, you know. So yeah, you might wanna check that out below. All right, we'll talk soon.